So last week we took a look at the use of some basic functions in MATLAB. This week we're going to extend that and take a look at uh, statistical based functions. Now just like in Excel when we started to use uh, some statistics based functions, the use of those functions were, was no different than any other function that you might have used in Excel. And it's the exact same thing in MATLAB. So just because we, we've been introduced to the use of functions in MATLAB, we already probably have a pretty good idea of how to use uh, statistical, statistical functions in MATLAB because they're just functions. So in addition to doing that today, we're going we're gonna to talk about a, another topic, and that topic is working a little bit with data, specifically learning how to read in some data. So for example, <clears throat> if I'm going to do some statistics, I'm going to do some statistics on something. I'm going to have something to do statistics on, and, and one of the things I can do is just make up some numbers and take the average and the mean and the mode of all those numbers. That's not really all that fun. So well, let's do something a little bit more interesting than that. And the thing that we're going to do today is work a little bit with some um, some real weather data that I snagged from the uh, the National Climate Database um, online, and I'll show you where I got that data. Do it. It doesn't really matter. Okay, and the easiest way to do that is just to pull over a web browser window right here. And so, if you just search for quality controlled local climatological data, you can pull up your state that you're interested in, and then you can go to um, different weather stations throughout the state. So, for example, there's a weather station in Ann Arbor, um, and that's where I pulled the data from. The data that I pulled off of that website, I then modified and put in a format that we could work with a little bit easier. Um, so, I can show you that data simply by going into um, a folder that I created over here in MATLAB. So I'll, I'll bring that data up. If you look over here in my current folder, so remember we're working with um, in, in the MATLAB path, which is on my directory, my home directory, dpalouse slash document slash MATLAB. That was my path that we talked about a couple weeks ago. I've created this new folder called temp and this new folder called weather. And so I've stuck in this weather directory um, a new file. And this file is called temp data 201202.dat. So this, this is temperature data from 2012 for the month of February. And the data is hourly. Um, one thing I want to point out really quick is if you look closely here, you notice that weather and temp, these directories are sort of grayed out. What this is telling me, my lab's trying to, to warn me that, that these directories, while in this main directory, MATLAB, which is part of my path, the subdirectories are not included in my path. And so that means MATLAB, um, if I don't do anything special, won't be able to find this, uh, this file when I want to use it. So I'll show you how to work around that. Anyway, um, this is the file that we're going to be working with, and if I open that file, oops, sorry about that. If I open that file, um, you can see that this is the data. Now, MATLAB is putting some different things in here because it's already trying to import the data, and I don't want to do that. I'm going to show you to import the data without using this graphical stuff. But all the data is is three columns of numbers. This first column um, is basically the hours after the start of the month. So this is the hours after. Uh, zero universal time on February 1st, 2012. This column is temperature and Celsius, and this column is precipitation, um, and that's rain, not snow, which is why there's a bunch of zeros. Actually, in 2012, there wasn't much snow anyway, I don't think. Um, but anyway, there's, there, there wasn't much precipitation that, that, um, that month last year. If you recall, it was pretty warm. So this is what the data looks like. Um, note that the data, I call it dot .dat, that's just a, an extension. It doesn't really matter what you call it. MATLAB will recognize dot dot and open it up so you can you can look at it. But um, most of the time when we're working in programming, these extensions make no difference. Uh, it's just a way to remind the users, us, what the file, what type of what what the file is. Is it data or is it a MATLAB file or is it an Excel file? Things like that. But the computer usually doesn't care unless the program specifically says, "Oh, okay, I know what to do with dot dot." All right, so what we're going to do, the first thing we need to do is to be able to, to read this data into MATLAB. Right now that data exists outside of MATLAB. Yeah, I can double-click on this and, and open it in MATLAB in some weird way. But I don't want to use that. I want to, use, I want to be able to write, write into an M file, into a file that I'm doing some programming with, how to read that data. And so I'm going to do that by creating a new script, just like we've done before. And so now this is just a blank script, and I'm going to, I'm going to learn how to read the data in. Now there are a bunch of different ways that you can read data into MATLAB. In fact, there's so many ways it's sort of annoying. What, what the MATLAB programmers have tried to do is, is give you a function that will allow you to read in data um, even if you have no idea how to program. So it's, it's really good. There's a lot of different things that you can do and you don't need to know much about programming, which is good for us. Um, but in the future, as you go, as you go further into 
your physics career and learn more about computers, you should learn how to basically write your own functions that can read in data. Uh, because no matter how many different, um, different data reading functions MATLAB people build, there's always going to be some data format that doesn't work um, given those built-in functions, and you're going to have to do your own. And it's really not all that complicated to, to read in data. It's, it's a really basic programming task. But anyway, for now, we can use um, MATLAB's built-in functions to read in data, and so we're going to learn how to do that today. All right, the function that we're going to use to read in this data is called dlmread. And that function, um, basically what that stands for, if I could actually bring up the help here, more help, um, it stands for delimited, uh, uh, delimited, delimited, I'm sorry, delimited read, file read. I can talk. Uh, so delimited file read basically says we're going to read a file and I'm going to tell you how the data is delimited. In other words, I'm going to tell you how the data is separated. So in theory, there's going to be a bunch of numbers in our data file, and those, data, those numbers are going to be separated somehow using spaces or tabs or commas or colons or something like that. And I'm going to tell um, MATLAB how, how they're, how they're, what the delimiter is, what character the delimiter is. Now you notice in this help, what we're doing is reading ASCII delimited, an ASCII delimited file. ASCII is a type of, of file which basically for our purposes is just a text file. Um, letters and, and numbers that we use on a day-to-day -day basis, Arabic numbers and letters, um, that you can, you can open up the file and you can read it and there's no hidden formatting behind the scenes or, or anything like that. It's different than, let's say, a binary file, which would obviously be in binary. Um, it's different than a, a CDF file, um, which you may have may be familiar with, which is just a common data format that people um, that people use. Uh, it's a self a self describing data format. So within the actual file itself, CDF files contain information about how the data is formatted. Um, ASCII is just basically text. It's text that you can read, and that's what you're reading in. Let me close this. So um, the DLM read, the way that that works is you have to give it some file name. I'll call it file. Let's, we'll create a variable that called, that's called file. And then you go, give it the delimiter. Now, by default, MATLAB treats the delimiter as a space. And if we look at our data file, let me open that up. If we look at our data file, you can see that the data that I'm, I'm using, this is just a, a text editor that I'm showing you now, the data that we're looking at is just three columns that are separated by spaces. So by default, MATLAB is going to be able to read this without me specifying a delimiter because it, it takes spaces as the default delimiter. Right? So this is set up very to, to make um, reading into to MATLAB very easily. Right? So back over here to my MATLAB script editor. So what I'm going to do here is, is I'm going to give the function DLM read a file name, and so I need to create that file. So file has got to be something. Now, the file that I've created is called tempdata 201202.dat. That's the name of the actual file. Now, the problem with that, like I just showed you a minute ago, if I go back over here to my MATLAB command window, and I look in, um, I'm sorry, if I look in weather, um, there's the file, but again, weather isn't, isn't part of my path. So MATLAB isn't going to be able to find this um, very easily. So I need to actually do something a little bit different here with my file name. And that is I need to actually give it the folder that it's in. It's in weather. MATLAB won't know to look in weather, so I'm going to tell MATLAB to look in weather simply by giving, uh, putting that directory in my file. I'm going to throw a semicolon in there just so, just so I suppress the output from MATLAB. And now I'm going to do one other thing, and that is, well, okay, th this command will read this file, and it's going to put the, the contents of that file into a matrix. Um, if I don't give that, that uh, if I don't assign this to a variable, it's going to assign it to the built-in MATLAB variable ants, which isn't particularly useful. So I'm going to save it to the variable named data. Data is just a generic variable in this, in this, in this context. And then uh, after it does that, I'm going to go ahead and display, um, I'm going to display the data. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and save this, and I'm going to save it in my, I'll save it in my MATLAB um, directory, and I'm going to call it read weather, so that it's in my MATLAB directory, it's in my MATLAB path. All right, now let me flip back over to my command window, and the first thing you'll notice is here's that read weather m file, so I've saved, I've saved my program in the correct directory, and now I can go ahead and use it. I can do that just by typing read underscore weather. 
I hit enter and look and I get all the data that I have in my, my temp data file. You can see that there's quite a bit of it and it's a nice thing that I can just go ahead and read that in because I would really not want to sit there and type all this data into a, a MATLAB matrix. And so what we what were displayed there is just this data, um, this data um, variable. And that data variable, as you can see, is comprised of a is a, a two-dimensional matrix that has one, two, three columns and then a whole bunch of rows. Um, and I can go ahead and and select out some of the data, just like we've done in the past when we were using uh, when we took a look at arrays and matrices before. So let's say I just want to take a look at my first temperature, um, my first temperature measurement. Well, that first temperature measurement would of course be in the first row, uh, but it would be in the second column. And so how matrix, or how uh, MATLAB counts um, rows and columns is the first element corresponds to the row number. You give it a comma, and the second element, the second element co corresponds to the column number. So our temperature data is in the second column, and I want the first element of my temperature data. So if I print that. I get 9, and if I scroll up and show you, that is in fact what, uh, what the, te the first temperature measurement. So I've done that correctly. Similarly, I can take a look at my first precipitation measurement. That's going to be 0 because precipitation is always 0. Um, and I can take a look at, I don't know, let's take a look at my fifth, um, my fifth time measurement, my fifth hours measurement. That's 5 comma 1. Again, this corresponds to the fifth row down, so if I were up at the top, it would be counting down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then the first column, so I'm selecting out this column. And the answer is, well, uh, at that, in that row, the time of the measurement is 1.8 out, 1 hours after the start of the month. Sort of a weird unit, but well, good enough for us anyway. Okay, so let's actually use this and head back over, flip back over to, um, to, the, to the script that I was working on. I'm going to use this so that I can kind of cut out um, a chunk of my matrix and save it. So for example, what I'd really like to do is let, I'd like to save part of that matrix into um, a separate array called temperature. I want to take my temperature data out of that matrix and put it in its own little own variable so that I could go ahead and work with that variable on its own later. So if I were just taking the first element of my temperature data and putting it into a variable, I would do it like this. Just like I did before, I was printing this element and that, was, that corresponded to my first element of the first temperature reading. Now I'm saving that first temperature reading into a variable called temperature. But I don't want to just save the first temperature reading. I want to save all of the temperature readings. I want to save the entire column. The way that I do that in MATLAB is instead of, so instead of saying one here, which corresponds to the row, I want to tell MATLAB to give me all rows. And the way to do that is by placing in a semicolon, I'm sorry, a, a colon. This colon just sent, stands for give me all elements in this index, this index corresponding to, um, corresponding to the rows. And this says, okay, but I want the second column only, right? So I want, I want temperature to become a, 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 an array, a, a single element matrix, a one, a, a column matrix, that is made up of the second column of data. That's what that line says right there. And I've gone ahead and suppressed the, uh, the output just so that I can go ahead and display it using my proper, uh, my proper coding technique. Now, before we move on and actually run this program, I don't need to see data anymore. We've already looked at data. And so I want to I wanna do a little sidebar here and talk about one thing we haven't talked about yet, and that is commenting. Um, any good programmer makes sure to go ahead and comment their program so that they can come back later and understand what's happening um, in the program. And all a comment is is a line of, of text, a line of code that isn't read by the program itself. So I want to put a symbol here that'll tell MATLAB to ignore this line. In MATLAB that symbol is the percent sign and what this tells, this tells MATLAB and it highlights it in green so you know that this is a comment. This says, hey MATLAB, don't worry about this line, just pretend it isn't there, skip it, move on, don't display the data. All right, let's go ahead and save it and then flip back over to the command window here. And now I'm going to hit up a few times and go ahead and read weather again. And this time you can see that, yep, I get what I expect. I get a column full of temperature data. And if I scroll all the way up to the beginning here, you can see that I might as well just drag it. Let's see, you can see eventually we'll get to the beginning. Oh, there it is. Uh, read weather. The only thing that's output is my temperature data, starting with the nine, just like I'd expect nine degrees C. And there was no, there was no actual printing of that data file, uh, the the entire data matrix, because yeah, I commented it out. So Matt, Matt ignored it. 
Okay, I'm going to flip back over to the script now and begin to work a little bit with, with temperature. So the nice thing about this, the MATLAB's built-in ability to read files is because, well, look, we read a data file in, well, in really two lines here, and I guess I could have technically combined that into a single line. Well, this is better coding practice. And then I, I got the data that I wanted, the temperature data, in, in, another, in another two lines, or another one line. So it really took three lines of code to get data from a file into a usable form. Now once that data is in a usable form, I can go ahead and do anything I want to it. I can change it, I can multiply it by a constant, and I can, I can use some um, statistics to do, well, to, statistics functions to do some statistical analysis on the data. All right. so as you might expect, there are some pretty common statistical functions out there. Um, the first thing I might be interested in are what are the maximum and minimum values. So I can go ahead and determine that. Um, <clears throat> and I'm going to save each of these values to a, to a uh, variable so that I can display them nicely later on. So max temp I can get using the max function. So max and then I get my help box here. Well, I already know probably that I want to take the max of temperature. Temperature. There we go. So that's the max. The min temp then I can get from the min function like so. And then the uh, mean temp, I can get using the mean function, like so. All right, so now I have, I've got three variables that are set to, that are set to three different, um, three different chunks of data. All right, now let's go ahead and display this data. So I've got three things that I want to display. Now, Remember before when we wanted to, to display, um, we can display a single variable very easily by just enclosing, the, just passing uh, the, the variable that I want to display into the display function. But remember there was an issue if I wanted to, dis wanted to display more than one, uh, more than one thing uh, because display just takes a single argument. So the way around that is to create a, a basically an array of things that I, that I want to display. So here I'm displaying max temp, min temp, and then um, mean temp. I can do that like so. So now I've enclosed this in square brackets. So this whole entire thing here is a single element. It's a single argument to my display function. It's an array, which is just one thing that's made up of three different elements. The other, uh, the same thing, I could have done the same thing if I'd created a new element, called it um, temporary array, and then filled temporary array with these three elements, and then just use display parenthesis temporary array. Those are, those were, that would have been the exact same thing. I'm going to go ahead and add semicolons here to suppress the output. I'm going to save it, flip back over, and we'll see how well it works. Oh, there it is. I got my temperature array displayed, and then I got the maximum temperature is 9.4, the minimum temperature is negative 12.2, and the average is just under, just under zero degrees Celsius. Right, so I want to show you what would have happened had we not separated out that the temperature data from our data matrix, our original data matrix. So I'm going to head back over to the script here, and I'm going to comment out this display uh, for the time being. And now I'm going to add in another another variable that I'm just going to call it uh, max data. And max data, I'm just going to take the max of my data array, just like so. I'm going to go ahead and display that like that, save it and flip back over, and read weather again. And you notice at the bottom here I get something sort of different. Whereas before, okay, I displayed my, I displayed three variables, whoa, I went too far. Sorry about that. Way too far. This is a bad way to do it. I should have just output, just output the same thing. Okay, there it is. So I, before I output my three variables, this was max temp, min temp, and average temp. Here I get three variables. I get three. Um, I get an output of, of three different um, three different values, um, but this clearly doesn't correspond to the temperature. So what is this outputting? So what this is, what MATLAB is doing here is I'm taking the maximum of my data array. So remember, this is what I'm printing out: max max of data. Data is a three column matrix. It has three columns in it. So the max function in, in MATLAB will automatically, if you give it a matrix, will auto automatically try to take the the apply the maximum function to each of the columns in the matrix, right? So what I got here is this is the maximum 
um, the maximum hours, the maximum value corresponding to the hours column. Here's the maximum temperature, which is what we've seen already, and then the maximum amount of precipitation. So the max, the max function still does, in fact, work on matrices. Um, you just may not always get what you want. Okay. Now I could have gone the next step here and said, all right, well, yeah, I know what that's going to be. That's going to be um, th that's going to be the maximum value. That, since I have a three column array that's going to give me three values so if I maybe I save this to max I know I've already saved this to max data is equal to max data like so there it is now I can say okay I know that max temp is equal to um, max data and then I want well I want the second element of that guy and now I actually get the max temp value that I expect so that's another way to do what we had done in our script um, just with a slightly different structure where we're not actually saving the temp data to an array. Personally, I prefer doing extracting the temperature data to its own array before working with it because you know now I still have access to that temperature array so I can do other things to it, but it's really personal preference. And in some cases, this might be the more efficient way to do things because I haven't taken up memory by creating another array. I haven't created temperature all right, in this context where I've just taken the max of the data. Um, I didn't need to create the temperature array here, so it, it might save a little bit of memory at the expense of simplicity. All right, I've gone ahead and cleared the screen here, and I want to finish up with one thing that's maybe just a tad bit more advanced. And, and that thing is that I'm a little bit, um, I don't really like how I've displayed these three variables up here. I'm going to go ahead and delete this stuff. Actually, I'll just comment it out because we like comments and bring this back in. Well, we'll leave that out for a second. I don't like how I display this max temp, min temp, mean temp. When I did that, what that gave me was three separate variables on a line. But if I wanted to add something like, you know, a little bit of a of text explaining that this is the max temp, this is the min temp, this is the mean temperature, that's really hard using this display function. Because display can only handle a single argument, and that argument, while it can be an array, arrays can only be one type of, of um, a variable. So in this case, these are all floating point numbers. They're real numbers. So I can't add text in here because those are reals. Now before, we got around that by converting a number to a string. So for example, you used int to string, the int to string function, to convert an integer to a string. And you could do that here by converting a float to a string, but you might lose some, you might lose some information about <clears throat> the float itself, and it requires several conversions all at the same time. So there's actually a better way to get around that. And the way to get around that is to use a different function called sprint, S-P-R-I-N-T-F. And what this function is, is basically formatted printing. And by formatting, what I mean is that we're going to tell MATLAB what type of information we're going to print so that it knows whether to print a string or a, um, or a, a real number or an integer, etc. Right? The way that sprint, uh, sprint F works is you need to give it a format specifier which I'll talk about in just a minute, and then any number of arguments after that um, corresponding to the actual data itself, so uh, corresponding to the variables. And you can get more help here just like you would anything else. Okay, so but basically what we need is a format code, a format specifier. I'm going to save that in another variable, and I'm going to call that variable format um, code just to be different. And then I know that I'm going to end up printing max temp, min temp, and then mean temp just like that. All right, so now the only thing I need to do is this this won't work as it's written because MATLAB doesn't know what format code is, so I just need to tell MATLAB what format code is. Now format code can be actually um, a few things, um, but what it has to be is it has to consist of what we call format codes. And format codes are actual, um, they're strings themselves that always start with the percent sign and then correspond to, a, uh, each letter corresponds to a different uh, different type of of, um, of variable. So, for example, percent %s means whatever I'm going to print is a string. So, if I put format code in here as percent %s, MATLAB would then assume that these three things are strings. Now, of course, that's not the case. These three, three things are real numbers, and I'm going to put instead of %s, I'm going to use percent %f. What this says is now interpret these things as floating point numbers or real numbers, basically numbers that have decimal points and some, some uh, numbers before the decimal and some numbers after. And MATLAB is going to go ahead and handle um, each of those, uh, each of those um, 
how many how many how many decimal points are shown before and after the decimal place, right? Now I can also include in here a couple of different things. I could actually um, I can tell MATLAB to separate these numbers. So think of this thing as actually replacing max temp with percent %f. I can separate that. I have to tell MATLAB how many in this format code how many things it has to it has to um, print. So I can do that using um, three different percent %f's. And by separating these by commas, that'll actually, when I print this, it'll separate each of these values by, with a comma. Um, if I were to just do this, there would be no separation between each of these three variables. They would just look like a single, uh, a single, va uh, a single value, um, but with lots of extra decimal points. So it wouldn't really be readable. So I'm going to put commas in here, and then I guess I'll add spaces just to give me a little bit of space. Now, in addition to that, I can put in whatever text I want because sprintf is going to read this format code basically as text, and it knows to interpret this percent sign thing as a format code. So I can actually write down some text so that I can give the user a little bit of information about what I'm printing out here. So I'm just going to uh, say something like uh, the maximum, minimum, and average temperature or O2 of 2012 is that. And now if I go ahead and save that and flip back over and run my weather, oh, I have to get rid of that, uh, read weather, I have to go up for a while. We'll see what we get. All right, so here we go. I actually got it twice because I didn't suppress my output, but um, I've I told my, this is my format code, the maximum, minimum, and average temperature for blah, blah, blah is percent %f, percent %f, percent %f. Now you can see when I actually use that, and I use that when I, uh, when I use sprintf, sprint f, um, I get the same text down here, and then MATLAB replaces each of the variables that I give it, um, it replaces these, these characters up here with the actual variables that are given. So now I can actually see that, hey, this is, a, this is a useful line that my user will look at this and say, I, I know exactly what you're printing, not just three random numbers. Right? So this is a little bit more advanced way of, of how, do you, how to print um, information to the screen or print information to the, um, to the command line uh, when you're writing programming, when you're doing programming. Uh, and this is, this is really how most programmers do output, whether they're using MATLAB or they're using different languages. It always looks very similar to this. You use some sort of a print function, along with some format specifiers to make sure that you shape your output in a way that makes sense um, to a human user. All right, so with that said, we only covered three statistical functions. I should mention that, um, that MATLAB has a statistical toolbox that you can search for and you can learn about online. Um, in fact, I guess I can bring that up here. Um, let me bring over a window here. And I search for MATLAB uh, statistics. Uh, toolbox, or I probably just don't even need the toolbox, but what you'll get is the statistics toolbox, and you can see that there are, um, let's see, the documentation functions. And you click on functions, you can see that there are so many functions that are available to you um, to perform statistics with. And I'm not going to cover any of these because, I mean, really, the, the ones that we're going to use, especially in the 200 level physics courses, are sort of means and medians and modes and things like that, all things that you're familiar with, and those. And we covered three of those today, and the rest are pretty are pretty easy to do. But just I just want to make you aware that there are a lot of different types of statistical um, functions that you can incorporate depending on the type of statistics you're doing. And there's so many that I yeah you know, I don't know anything about half of you know more than half of these uh, because there's just so many different types of statistics that you can do. But it's all here. It's all it's all down um, in the in the help online so you can you can look at that if you ever need to access these type of specialized statistics functions. Right, that's it for this week and we'll come back next week and we'll start to take a look uh, at probably the most important topic when you're using MATLAB especially for uh, for physics um, plotting.